<laughs> My man got the headphones on to look like a real podcast. That's, That's right. going to be the, what is it, the, the, the blooper? The blooper reel at the beginning of the episode to excite the people. That's right. We're, we're upgrading. We're upgrading, y'all. Alice had a mic now, so I'm out of a job. Fancy. If anybody's hiring <laughs> for free. <laughs> So we work for free around here. If anybody's hiring for free, please. Still looking for that raise, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Okay. Uh, that's when I hang up and I call Bailey. Mm. And we pray together. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, so today we're going to do something a little bit different. Alex and I are going to do a deep dive into a, a topic that I'm sure a lot of our listeners really want to know the truth about. But before I do that, I should probably introduce the podcast. Uh, today, I will be your host, Dr. Joe Lazo, and we have Alex Lee. Yeah, Dr. Alex Lee. And uh, today's episode, we'll be talking about is residency worth it? Short answer: Yes. Is that is that the short answer? <laughs> is that the spark notes? From my point of view, but we will be talking about it. So. Um, I like that. I like that. We can talk about it. Usually we're we're more scripted, but uh, today we're just going to be super authentic, super raw. Um, it's uncut, unfiltered. So if I say anything problematic, please forgive me. Uh, <laughs> but um, Alex will be more of the protagonist, and I will be more of the antagonist. Mm. I believe so. Um, stay tuned. It's going to be an exciting episode. We thank you all for, for tuning in. Um, Caps RX podcast. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, um, everywhere. We have a lot of exciting things we're planning on doing in the future. So we appreciate all the support and uh, cannot wait to release all the content that we will be releasing soon. Uh, so you guys can kind of see what we've been working on and, and cooking up. And uh, merchandise coming soon too. So if you guys want to support us and want to uh, help out and contribute in any way or if you have any ideas any suggestions to help improve the podcast please 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 reach out to Alex or myself um, you can find us on Instagram Facebook we have a link tree on our uh, capsule RX uh, Instagram page so you can go there and reach out to the both of us all right so let's get started is residency worth it yes I think it is yeah I mean, we both did residencies. Um, well, you did one year, I did two years. Yes. Um, so there definitely are pros and cons. You know, I to say the least. I think. I mean, the, the common. I think the biggest con would be, um, you know, working as a professional pharmacist, but we only get like half the pay or less than half the pay. Um, and you know, are we truly getting a different experience? compared to if we just went straight to like a regular pharmacist job. You know, that, that is, I think that's the debate that a lot of people have. Um, so I think for me at least, just a, just a little bit of background about myself. So, you know, I went to school in Maryland. Um, I did a PGY1 community-based residency um, at South College, and that's in Knoxville, Tennessee. And then I did a PGY2 um, ambulatory care residency um, at Advent Health Celebration, where I met Jovin. Um, so when I started my residency career, my, my goal was always to do two years. Yeah. Um, I always felt that for, for me, like I needed some sort of structured learning and I felt residency provided me that. Um, and it granted me a lot of different experiences. Um, so definitely like my PGY1, like I was in an, a primary care setting. I was in a skilled nursing facility, as well as doing some academia, and I was also at an independent pharmacy. So I got a variety of experiences in that one year, and that's something that I probably would not have gotten in a year span if I was working a regular job. Yeah. Um, and yes, it, I think the downside is that you, you don't get the full pay, but I think the benefits of getting the variety of experiences really helped me because it, it allowed me to see what I truly liked which is ambulatory care. You know, I, I, I worked at independent pharmacy, and I was like, you know, it, it's, it's all right, but it, it doesn't, it's not my cup of tea. I was at a skilled nursing facility, eh, not, not my cup of tea. I mean, we did some med recs, but, you know, I, I still felt like being in a doctor's office, being able to work with the providers and nurses, that gave me, um, you know, that, that gave me joy. So that's why, like, I felt that 
I need to do a PY2. I needed more experience, um, just focus in that particular setting. Um, so yeah, that, 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 that's my, that's my, I guess my journey. Um, and I don't know, Joe, if you want to share yours, yeah. uh, and then we will, we'll talk more. Yeah, certainly. So when it comes to my journey, uh, not too long ago, I graduated about a year ago and you know, I did my rotations in my block at Advent Health Celebration, um, went through the whole match process and applied for PGY1 and I ended up matching at Advent Health Celebration. So I recently completed my residency there where I met Alex and uh, ambulatory care focus. So I had some inpatient and ambulatory care experiences, which was great. And um, going in, I did believe I was going to do the PGY2, but I did not and I'll explain why a little bit later. And that's basically sums up where I'm at now. And, you know, talking to other colleagues, talking to friends, talking to acquaintances within pharmacy, you know, we always ask ourselves like, was it actually worth it? So I'm sure a lot of our listeners are wondering it too, you know, uh, should I do a residency? Should I do a PGY too? should I maybe just work? You know, these are questions that went through my head as well. Um, but I solidified during my rotational experiences that I wanted to do a residency. And I can explain why, um, but I kind of want to go in first. We'll, we'll go in positive. We don't want to be negative Nancy. So we'll come in positive and we'll talk about why we believe residency is worth it and then why we believe it could not be. And we'll just focus on PGY1 going first and then we'll go into the PGY2. So do you want me to start off? Yeah. Okay. So with PGY1, I think Alex really touched upon it. The first thing I would say is, if you are unsure of what you want to do career-wise, it is a great option. Yes, you don't get paid as much as a full-time pharmacist, but you have been broke as a student. (laughs) So so there's no change there. You'll survive another year, trust me. Um, Is it taxing on your mental health, on your emotional health? on maybe your relationships and different things like that. Yeah, certainly, it's, it's going to be a challenging year. It's going to be probably one of the toughest years you ever experienced in your life. But with that will come a lot of growth. And through that growth will be rotational experiences that help you identify whether or not if you want to do this for your career. So, for example, um, I kind of already knew what I wanted to do, but let's say I didn't know. If I didn't know, Uh, I had some rotational experiences in the ICU. I had rotational experiences um, with internal med, outpatient in different clinics. So experiencing it, I'm like, okay, I know ICU isn't really for me, okay? I can eliminate that career-wise. I know, you know, um, sorry, let me me actually backtrack, because you come in probably knowing when you're doing a residency, you don't want to do community, right? And you don't want to probably do industry. So then you go into there. So it's like you eliminate those fields in pharmacy. But now everything else is open to you and that's a lot, right? In an ambulatory care setting, you have like maybe a diabetes clinic, a heart failure clinic, you have a warfarin or a coumadin clinic, you have transitions of care. On the inpatient side, you have transitions of care, regular um, internal med or gen med. You have um, oncology, you have um, outpatient oncology, you have cardiovascular ICU or surgical ICU, you have medical ICU. You have neuro ICU, Uh, you have the ED. There's so many different components within the hospital. So it's like, and um, staffing too, let me not forget staffing, right? So working more in the central pharmacy. So how do I decide? And I think if you are wondering, or if you have those thoughts where it's like, I don't know, everything seems kind of general to me. I think it's a good opportunity to go in and do a residency because doing it will tell you what you want to do. And I think, no, I don't think, this, this is like a firm belief of mine that since we spend so much of our time at work, you should at least enjoy what you're doing. You're gonna spend more time at work than you do with your family, than you do with your friends, doing anything else with your life. So why not enjoy the eight hours a day or 10 hours a day or 12 hour shifts, whatever it is, why not enjoy it? If most of your time during the week is gonna be dedicated to this, at least enjoy it. And pharmacy is such a such a large profession. I know they say that there's like a a, a job shortage and all that. I personally haven't experienced or seen that. I think a lot of times people are very specific to a location and that might be tough, but if you open yourself up to the entire state of Florida, for example, rather than the city of Orlando, there's a lot of job opportunities. And with that, 
comes you finding a job that you're actually passionate about and maybe you're not extremely passionate about it but you at least like it so you enjoy going to work and you enjoy working hard so that's one of the the people that i believe would truly benefit is if you're truly unsure if residency is worth it right now did you want to add on anything because i have a couple more um, yeah, I just people wanna, that i feel like yeah i, I, I kind of want to touch on um like the employment, because I think that's the biggest thing that a lot of people uh, think about. Um, and yes, like there's there's always been talk that yeah, like uh, employment wise, there's there's not a quote unquote lot of opportunities for pharmacists, but it depends on what you're looking for. You know, I think that's what you touched on. Um, interesting enough, so looking at the Bureau of Labor Statistics, so they project a two percent decline in pharmacist employment growth between 2020 to 2030. So in the next like eight years or so, we will see 2% decline. But interesting enough though, um, when we're looking at pharmacy school applicants, yeah. that's had a bigger decline. So from 2019, there was about 15,000 applicants for pharmacy schools nationwide. Mm -hmm. 2020, there was an 11% decline. So statistic wise, like, people can, I would say, twist how things are interpreted or represented. So yeah, so we can look at a whole that yeah, maybe employment overall is declining, there's maybe not a lot of opportunities, but you have to think about like, well, how many incoming pharmacy students, how many out, like outgoing graduates are yeah. gonna be there? Um, so when it comes down to residency, like if it comes down to just purely employment, you know, I think you know that that's definitely a factor to think about, but I don't think that should be the big decision that leads you towards a residency, right? There has to be other things. Yeah. Um, so, I first of all, I love that you brought the statistics. I know we we, know, <laughs> we were doing this. I came unprepared. Uh, I appreciate that. Alex is dropping knowledge on all of us, and um, that's I think that's even a conversation maybe for for another day yeah. on the podcast is just discussing whether or not pharmacy is worth it as a profession, but. When it comes to residency, so I'm going to add on to what you said. Yeah. The whole reason of doing a PGY one is, in my opinion, it's two things. One, it's if you're unsure of what you want to do, so it can help guide you there. Sorry, three, three things. One, if you're unsure of what you want to do, and guide you there. Two, if you know you want to specialize, and that's what I was going to get to next. Whereas you did a PGY two and something, so you do a general PGY one. All right, psych is for me. Okay, ICU is for me. Mm -hmm. um, Transplant is for me, specialty pharmacy is for me, or something where you need to get some specialized skill, yeah. and which makes sense, because maybe you just had a rotation for it, so you want that spe that um, specialized experience for a year uh, to be well-trained in, in that area. So then that makes sense for you to do a PG-1-2. And then the third thing would be, you have to look at yourself as a business, okay? Each and every single one of you that are listening, you are a business, you are a brand. That's why they always say networking is key. It's important within pharmacy because somebody knows somebody. So you always want to have respectful interactions. You always want to be uh, polite, kind, and whatnot, even if somebody can be difficult for you to deal with. We, I always say don't talk bad about anybody because you never know who's listening. And don't say inappropriate things because you never know who's also listening to that. So because it is a, a battle for jobs, which you mentioned, there's gonna be a decrease in job growth between 2020 to 2030, 2%. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's a 2% decrease in job growth. Yes, there's less applicants, but let's not even focus on that. 2% decrease in job growth, which we can get into another day too, because we see what Amazon's doing. I, I see what Amazon's mm -hmm. doing. 2% um, decrease in job growth. So less positions, let's say it's the same amount of people, less positions. How, you, how are you going to stand out? Residency, that's a way to stand out. Certifications is another way to stand out. Getting a PGY-2 is another way to stand out. Because how many of, um, I know it's very popular now to get a PGY-1, but how many people have a PGY-2? You know, um, I know there's talks about PGY-3, but we're not gonna go there. <laughs> Oof. Oof, yeah. But uh, I haven't even done a PGY-2. <laughs> <laughs> but, mm, but, that's something that we also need to consider is, right. hey, how can I make myself stand out? Because I'm applying for jobs and I don't want to look like everybody else. And a PGY-1 can help you stand out. So that's another key thing. If you're looking at it from a business as a brand perspective, where I go to do a PGY-1, are they a big institution? You know, Advent Health Celebration is well known for the ambulatory care services. Why would I go somewhere else for AMP care? No disrespect to other inst institutions. I did interview during residency and stuff like that. I mentioned before I had 
I applied to 10 places, I got five interviews. Um, no disrespect to VAs or different things, but you know, it's the way it is. That's, that's a place where they have a big net worth. They have a big brand. They have a lot of different hospitals that are trying to implement um, AmCare. So I looked at it as a business decision. Like, hey, this would be a great opportunity for me to learn, connect with a lot of different individuals within AmCare. If that's the route that I wanna go, this is kind of setting me up for the future. So we'll see how things go in the future. But that's something that I was thinking as like a business move. I can stand out by doing something like this at a well prestigious ambulatory care um, uh, clinic or ambulatory care, yeah, I guess, I guess we'll say clinic, ambulatory care clinic. So that way if I wanted to pursue a job in AmCare, maybe I don't have to do the route of a PTY2 um, just because they know how well trained I did with my PTY1. But those are like the three target audience. If you don't know what, what you want to do, if you want to really stand out, and if you know you want to specialize in something that you need a PGY2 in, yeah. those are the people I believe residency is worth it. No, I agree. I think those are the three reasons that anyone should be thinking about. And it shouldn't be just purely employment. Yeah. Because I know, again, a lot of students come out of school or they're about to come out of school, but they don't know what their future, um, you know, where, where it's gonna lie. Mm -hmm. So, and people always assume that residency or you know, even like fellowships, like those, those things are like cut your, your safe bets, which is, I guess it is, you know. Um, and a lot of these residency positions, as we will see um, going forward in the next couple of years, there's gonna be a lot more openings. Okay. Because again, um, there's a decline in pharmacy school enrollment. So they're gonna need more people. Um, so what they'll do is, They'll, you know, in schools, they'll, they'll really, you know, really emphasize the residency training or fellowship training that, you know, these are the steps that you need to take to become a really great pharmacist. Um, but again, you know, it all comes down to pros and cons. It all comes down like if you like to have like that structure, structured learning style or if you're the type of person that, you know, you may need just one year, you don't need two years, or maybe you don't need residency at all, you can just learn the job. You know, there's still opportunities like that out there. Um, and it's just interesting to hear people saying that, yeah, residency, residency, we say residency, that you know, that's a must. No, yeah. no, it isn't. No, it's not. It's not. Um, like for me personally, I thought residency was the best route for me because I needed that structured learning. Like I felt like there was a lot of areas that I still need to grow in, not just like on the clinical side, but just like professionally as well. Yeah. Um, so, you know, those are my reasons. Like, um, and yeah, of course, employment. Like, I was, I wasn't sure what I would, where I'll be at after school, but you know, I, I had to think about beyond that, like, just growth wise. Like, cause I, the, there, there are goals I have in five, ten years. I want to be the best, not only the best pharmacist out there, but just the best professional. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I completely agree with that statement, and it's. It's challenging to say, even from our standpoint, is it worth it? Because we didn't go, we can't go back in time and not do residency, right? Yeah. To see how things would end up. So that's why here we'll transition to, you know, maybe the individuals who shouldn't do residency. And with those people that I think of, with people that are counsel, it's, hey, school is tough. Don't get me wrong. School is tough. The summer might be easy, but it is a tough four years of school. And sometimes you just want to be done and go make some money. Mm -hmm. And you're perfectly fine being a central pharmacist, a staff pharmacist. You're perfectly fine learning on the job. You know, maybe you have to work in retail a little bit, and then maybe you'll work your way into a, a specialty position or different things like that. You can always, the way I view it is if you believe in yourself, you could always work your way to the job you want. Nobody ever says you can't get the job just because of this, all right? If they say you can't get the job because you don't have a PGY2 and something, but then all of your experience is in AmCare, <laughs> that yeah. doesn't make any sense, right? In, in my opinion. So it's what it's really about your experience. That's how you get a job. Is how can you sell yourself and what experiences you have that can that can help you get that job. 
So if you're able to, you know, maybe work a lot of your, your years as a student in an oncology area and that's where you know you want to work, ask them and see if they have an opportunity for you to get a position. Like, you don't want to do residency. You know this is what you want to do. I just want to step right in and start working, even if it's per diem. Maybe I'm not getting the most shifts possible. But um, you'll be at pharmacist pay, so you don't need as many shifts to um, survive, I guess, I, guess yeah. I, I would say. So that's something that, you know, you really got to weigh your pros and cons, as you touched upon earlier, as, hey, is this really needed for the career path that I'm going to go? Because I always look at the residency as it's a quick way to get to your career path. It might, be, it might take longer if you don't do a residency, but I still believe if you put in the work ethic and the time, you can still get to your goal. Okay, there's pharmacists who work in, in the care environment who have no PGY-1, who, who have no PGY-2, you know, because they just worked and learned. Because if you think about it at the end of the day, how did you become a pharmacist? You learned. Yeah. You learned these things. So you just put in the work outside of work. You put in those hours to learn that field. You study. You go get a certification. Um, that's one of the reasons why I didn't do a PGY-2 um, was because of that that fact because it's like do i have to go do a second year of residency to maybe specialize in something when maybe i can just go get the certification study and prepare um you know if there's a board exam or anything like that just study and prepare for the board exam that's all i have to do so a lot of times i think people forget that you can put in that work but they want the quicker routes and the quicker route is definitely probably going to be residency yeah. but you can always still get to your goals if you just like focus on hey i really want to make money hey i have Maybe, you know, a child coming in, maybe family things, you need to support your family. Like, you can go make money and just work your way into the position you still seek. Yeah. So if you're one of those that um, really w wants to get to the money, there's no problem with that. If you want to, you know, start enjoying your life. I know some people who is like, hey, I really want to enjoy my life. I'm kind of tired of working um, this hard. I'm fine being, being a staff pharmacist or, or whatnot, or I'm fine doing this, working retail. If you're comfortable and enjoy what you're doing, then that's fine. Don't do a residency. You're just right. doing it to appease who? Others? You're not doing it for yourself. Like that's the whole point. It's like residency is worth it as if you're doing it for yourself. Mm -hmm. If you're not doing it for yourself, then you're just trying to appease others. Maybe it's your preceptors, maybe it's the school, maybe it's your friends, because all your friends are doing residency. It's like really deep down, I don't want to do it. Yeah. You know? And I've talked some people out of it. I don't know if that's a good thing. <laughs> but they're happy with their decision yeah. and they were able yeah. to get a job. Yeah. Um, still at the hospital because that's possible. Like I have friends who got it who didn't match with residency and still got a job at a hospital. Yeah. So it's it's you can do this. <laughs> it's yeah. not impossible. Yeah, and I, I think just again just going back to like how pharmacy schools, um, just how how they the, structure they structure things, how they advertise residencies. Um, like it's the easier route. One hundred percent. It's always it's, that's how it is. Like they want. They want to make it easier for students to, um, you know, be in a position for success because it just helps their reputation at the school at the end of the day. Um, but like what you touched on, like not everyone needs residency. People just want to work. Like I mean, if your if your goal is to work in retail, do you really need to do a residency? Probably not. No. Right. Um, and. Residency or no residency, right? You still have to put in the amount of work, right? So it's just a matter of like, um, again, like, do you do you want that that structured learning style? Do you want to really kind of specialize in a particular area? Then yeah, do residency. But um, if you feel that you know you could work your way up without doing all of that, right? You could get the job experiences during school. You know, work as a pharmacy intern or pharmacy tech, right? You you network. Um, you know, that's another way to, to get where you want to be. So, um, so yeah, I mean, that, that's both sides really. It's just, you know, I mean, you can't go wrong with either or, right? You can, if you want to do residency, you can do residency. If you don't want to do it, then you don't have to do it. Don't feel pressured by, you know, what schools are telling you, what friends are doing. Um, because at the end of the day, it's your own life, it's your career. You make the, you make the most out of it. Um, as long as you're happy with where you're at, that's what matters. Yeah, and and that's a scary thing too because so much of our lives have probably been told to us. Like mm -hmm. we're told to go 
to pre-K to kindergarten. Yeah. You gotta go to middle school, you gotta go to high school, you gotta go to college, and then maybe people recommend that you do pharmacy or different career paths or you should get into yeah. healthcare. And it's like a lot of things are told. And then you go to school and they tell you to do a residency or they tell you to do a fellowship. Mm -hmm. And so it's like a lot of things are told, but this is a time for you in your fourth year to really determine like, you know, am I gonna continue to do what people tell me or am I gonna step out and and kind of spread my wings and do what I feel is right for me, what's best for me. Mm-hmm. And I always tell people that that I counsel that, hey, if you don't believe residency is for you or if you're unsure, you could just take a year off, just work, just work. Yeah. And you know, if you want to do a residency, list, I'm gonna do a general, um, general residency, so at a hospital, uh, just try to get a job at the hospital. Mm-hmm. Try to do something where you're still using your clinical knowledge because in, in my mind, I feel like if I was RPD, I'd rather have somebody who has had more experiences working than uh, someone fresh out of school. If they're still using that clinical knowledge and they're working, because I know they're truly dedicated to doing this, because they were making pharmacists pay. Now you're w- willing to take a pay cut, <laughs> take make half of what you what yeah. you've been making or something yeah. like that, just to go through residency because you really want this, you know. And it's a tough year on people, and and that's why the next group of people that I would say it's not for is people that are burnt out, okay? Burnout is real. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you need to take a vacation or take a break and yeah. um, recenter yourself to go through it. It's a tough, tough year. And it's not to discourage anybody, but Alex touched upon it earlier. Everything is about putting in the work, right? Work experience. A residency is supposed to be three years of work into one. Yeah. So you're having a, a, a cramped learning session a cramped working session. So you can have long hours, little sleep, a lot of presentations, a lot of side projects, because we have to give you a three-year experience into one year. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than you working hard for three years to get to that point. So that's what a residency is doing. It's shortening that time frame instead of you having to spend three years in the workforce to be, yeah. to be up to the standard or up to this level, Ease HP saying, hey, you yeah. do a residency that equals three years. So they have to give you a lot of things to do. So if you're burnt out from school, um, and this isn't a knock on anybody that, that were like that was like this, but maybe if you had a lot of uh, student orgs that you were a part of, maybe if you had um, a lot of personal projects, maybe if you're raising a family, different things like that, you know, it could put you in a state where you will not be the best resident you can be. And if that's the case, I would recommend you hold off just because you can only make a first impression once. And you wanna go into the residency, you're trying the best you can because that's a potential job interview at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, those pharmacists probably know other pharmacists. So if mm-hmm. you're looking for work, if you're looking for a PGY2, they're the yeah. ones that gotta write that letter of recommendation. Mm-hmm. So if you go in and, and half behind everything and don't really try, that's not gonna say a great thing about you. And it's not that you don't wanna try harder, but maybe you're just too burnt out from all the work you're doing, right? So that's something where you can also measure like, hey, if I'm too burnt out, maybe I just work per diem somewhere, or maybe I work part-time somewhere, reset myself, take a couple trips, relax, spend time with my family, um, spend more time with my loved ones, et cetera, et cetera. And then I'll apply next year if I feel like it's still right for me. Sometimes people don't, they don't apply because they realize, you know, I'm comfortable with, with where my life is at. I don't need more, I'm not chasing anything else. So that's, that's like the two types of people that I believe um, residency would not be worth it. If, if you're completely burnt out and if you um, are perfectly fine working certain positions and working certain positions or if you're completely fine with working your way into that field, um, just you'd rather do it at a pharmacist's pay or at your own pace rather than doing it through um, a residency where you're kind of moving at ASHP's guidelines pace. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, those are kind of the ones. I don't know if you have anything else you want to add. No, I think, I mean, I agree with everything, but I'm just curious because I know that, again, you touched on ASHP, how they um, how they say that, you know, how, you know, one year of residency is equivalent to three years of experience. experience. Yeah. So, me personally, I don't know, but like, I'm curious like how they quantify that. Yeah. Um, I, honestly, for me, like I felt that a year experience of residency is still just a year worth of experience. Mm-hmm. I think when it came down to like applying for jobs, that's how it was perceived. I don't think people really see, oh yeah, you really did like three years worth of work. Well, 
did I really do three years worth of work? That, that, that's the question I have. I didn't feel like I did three years of work. That's, you know, I just felt like I was there for a year. I learned a year's worth of things that they could try to teach me. But um, I don't know, what, what, what are your thoughts? Like, did you, did, you, did you feel that you got three years worth of experience in that one year of residency? That is a tough thing to quantify. I don't remember if there was a study that they did, or I'm sure they did a study. I think there was a study we can, we can that, that, yeah, that showed that it was three years worth of experience, but you said something that it's true, because I, I went through that too during job interviews, whereas like maybe some jobs don't look at it as three years, but that's a conversation for another day, yeah. because that's more on that institution, and I have a theory behind that as to why we've talked about that yeah. off air, but just to stay on the topic of resident, if residency is worth it, and if I believe it was three years of experience, I would say honestly yes, because especially for, for me, because mm -hmm. PGY1 versus PGY2 experience was That's a lot true. different, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like I'm being trained in, in multiple different areas, you know, uh, I am doing a lot, I had a lot, I don't want to say a lot more, but I had extra projects than you had to do, you know, you're probably doing an MUE, you're probably doing CE presentations, you're probably doing um, uh, drug formula reviews, you're probably doing um, a lot of patient cases, journal clubs, you're doing a lot of things in a condensed amount of time, whereas, and you're possibly precepting students. So it's like, it's like so many different things are going on, whereas I feel like the average person would probably be spreading that out over three years. You know, maybe this year I'll take on the challenge of doing MUEs. Right. Maybe this year I'll take on the challenge of doing a, a formal area review, mm -hmm. or maybe this year I'll, I'll get a teaching certificate program rather than trying to do it all in one, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I do believe in that aspect that it, it's like three years worth of experience, but it's still, to us, it feels like a year because it was just oh, yeah. a year, yeah. right? Yeah. But it's like you do dedicate so much of your time to, to the residency site and, right. you know, that, that uh, it feels like three years. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. It felt like three years. Yeah. Uh, but once you get there, you realize, wow, it was just a year and that was it. But, yeah, I think, I think it, it kind of, in my opinion, I would say, yeah, just because you're doing so many different things yeah. that I probably would never cram packed into one year. So that's why I would say yes. Okay. You know, like I probably just want to learn hand care for a year, not learn hand care in ICU and also, <laughs> you know, like internal <laughs> med, gen med, yeah. uh, ED, you know, like learning all these different things into one right. year, like I probably wouldn't do that. I'd probably space it out. Um, and also learning essential pharmacy. So it's like so many different aspects that I've learned within one year. Um, which is even shorter than that because you still have to go through orientation and then like, you know, like everything's like that. So it's really more like maybe 10 months you're learning everything um, in 10 months. Uh, but yeah, yeah, so I kind of, I kind of say from that aspect, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can, we can look into it later, see like, what, what studies are out there. But yeah, I just, I was just curious that just, just kind of popped in my head while we're talking mm -hmm. about that. So I'm going to call one of my friends to see, see what he has to say. Um, in the meantime, though, for PGY2, just to touch upon that real quick, obviously I haven't done it, but I would say, oh, uh, hold up, hold up. Is this uh, Mr. Christian? Dr. Christian, excuse me, Dr. Christian. All right, you are live on the podcast right now. Please don't say anything to incriminate me or you, because <laughs> we know each other too well. <laughs> Of course, of course, brother. Um, so we're talking about is residency worth it? And I know you wanted to chime in. Is residency worth it? Yeah. It depends. That's probably not the answer. I think that's the answer we gave too. It depends. Um, give us real quick. What would you say uh, for the pros and some of the cons to residency? All right. Well, I'll start off with the it depends. Why I'm saying that. Um, uh, being someone who's doing a PGY2, I think if that's something you want to do and you want to specialize, you know, you got to go through it. You got to do first year, second year if you want to get to that position because most of the time it's pretty hard to get to a specialized position without it. Now, if you're not going to do that, honestly, you know, you can find ways around it. Now, pros and cons of residency. Let's start with the cons. Um, I feel like depending on 
who your preceptor is, what program you're in, you know, you might not be learning that much in certain rotations and just getting a slightly abused and doing grunt work. I think that's a huge con where people kind of see you as a spendable tool instead of actually teaching you because that's what you're there for. So I think that's a huge con uh, of residency and also the effects that it can have on you altogether as well. No sleeps. I, I could imagine if they did a study pre and post residency, how it affects your brain. Probably not too good. Health wise, uh, yeah. I, I honestly thought about doing a study like that. Like, I would love to do a study on people who did residency versus people who didn't to see, like, how their lives turned out. To see if there's a way to show how residency can impact with the lack of sleep, the extra stress that you probably put on yourself and whatnot. Um, just to see the, the impacts it have on your overall um, mortality. Yeah. It, you know what really bothers me about it? I think to a point, some people just see it as a prereq. Not like, hey, you're going to learn so much and do so much. It's more of like, we just got to put you through this because this is just the norm, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, like pointless prereqs that you have to take in college to move on with your degree. You don't really get it from it, but they're like, oh, you know, we need you to get to count two, even though you're never going to apply it or use it, just because. Type of thing. And I feel like sometimes people see a residency as that. Like, hey, you just got to get through it so that you can, you know, be like, okay. I have this and that credential and I can move on with my life after it. But to me, I'm like, you know, what's the point of that? Might as well have something worthwhile and learn as much as possible. But when you're getting your brain beat to a pulp with information again and again, like how much do you retain? I'm probably like 20% or 30% max, I would think. Right? Yeah. It's... It's kind of hard to be like, hey, was it worth it or not? Like, what did I truly get out of it? Now, sometimes I feel like we might put ourselves down as residents, but, well, you know, I don't know this, I don't know that, but in reality, we did learn a lot. But it's kind of hard to look at things in a positive light when you're exhausted, <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, it's, it's a pretty tough question. I think it just depends on the person and what they want mm -hmm. um, to see if residency is worthwhile. And then, real quick, uh, you don't have to share where you're at if you don't want to, but you said all that, and you still ended up doing a PGY, too. <laughs> so I want to know um, what kind of went into that decision process on, on you deciding to do a PGY, too. Real easy. I didn't see myself getting the position that I wanted and not doing it. And, you know, coming from a place not doing an AMP care focus PGY-1, I did not see it being an easy journey going straight into the job market to try to get an Amcare job. You know, there's other routes. Like, if I just wanted to be inpatient, doing like, I don't know, uh, internal medicine, emergency, there's ways of going about it. You don't have to do a PGY2 for those. I don't know. I'm not, like, I'm seeing it more and more. You're like, oh, I got an emergency medicine position, small hospital. You kind of, put in your time and go from there and you can actually, you know, sit in on the exam and get board certified. I see a lot of people doing it, but I don't see that many people doing that for care. But they're like, oh yeah, I just did my PGY1 and I got lucky in that position. Um, I also didn't have my card lined up as well to fall into anything AMP related after. So I was like, you know what, I just, I need to move on, push through just get through this year and I'm pretty confident once I'm done with this I'll have a pretty nice position waiting for me in a place where I can grow so am I happy that I have to do all this work again no I'm sitting here you know doing a bunch of work today on Sunday I mean, I'll just be relaxing but mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> it's just part of it yeah okay all right thank you I don't want you to say nothing else <laughs> I don't want you to get me in trouble uh, love you, brother. I, I didn't know if you would pick up, but I appreciate it. Nah, it's all good. It's all good. Glad that you had me on. Consider me just a, you know, a credible source. Yes, credible, <laughs> credible resource. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, bro. Of course. Yes, you too. We'll be in touch.
So he brought up another good point. So I wanted to keep this short. So yeah. let me ask you, Alex. So we're, we're running probably about 40 minutes now. Do we want to cut it or do we want to dive a little, a little bit deeper into something that he talked about, which was uh, the culture of the residency can make it not worth it. Because to me, it's that's a different conversation, right? That's you doing your due diligence when, yeah. you're, when you're going through the match process to making sure you're going to a place where the culture is right for you mm -hmm. and it's not just busy work. Not saying he's saying that's what he went through, not saying that's what I went through or I did or didn't, whatever right. is the case. You got to do your due diligence to find out just like a job. That's why I tell some of the places I've interviewed with, it's like, hey, I, I kind of want to just do per diem because I want to test it out first. I want to yeah. make sure it's a good culture. And then I'll commit to you if there's a part-time or full-time uh, position available because I want to make sure that I'm in an environment that I like. Because once again, you can like the work you do, but what if you don't like your coworkers, right? right? And that's right. most of where your your days throughout the week, throughout your whole entire life will be at work. Most of your life is at work. So why not enjoy the time that I'm there with my coworkers and with what I'm doing? So that's something that's very important, especially in the residency, because <laughs> trust me, all your time is going to be is going to be working. So you want to make sure it's the right culture for you. But yeah. I feel like that's a separate topic. I, I think so too. That, that I mean, that's that's a whole another episode right there. Yeah. Um, you know, and that, that that's that's a very important part of you know the the residency process. I think I'll, I feel like there 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 are people out there that kind of gloss over that. Yeah. Because again, it comes down to like, I need to have something. It's a prereq. Just, Just like, like it's a prereq. Prereq. Yeah. Yeah, as a prereq, I need to have something on my CV. I need a job mm -hmm. when I get out of school. So culture wise, oh yeah, I can just, you know, I can go with the flow. I can adapt. Yeah. I think that's a lot of mindset. I think that, that was a mindset that I had too mm -hmm. when, when I started off because, you know, again, like I want all the training, but it's like at the same time, it's like, ooh. I hope something like I hope I have something that I could like really just you know do yeah so but yeah that, that's another that's another episode right there so I agree so to sum it up and I know we didn't get into the PGY2s too much but just just a brief summary um, is it worth it it depends yeah cliche answer but honestly it does depend now the people who I believe it'll be a benefit of, and I would say you agree as well, Alex, is people who are pharma pharmacists or pharmacy students who are unsure of what they want to do, okay? Something you know for a fact you want to specialize in. I want to be IC pharmacist. I want to be this specific type of transplant, oncologist, whatever, like you know this is what you want to do. Um, that would be another way. And if you're being forward thinking, which is something else that um, Christian kind of mentioned where he didn't have his ducks line up in a row, to whether or not he could get into that AM care position that he wanted to. So he felt like he had to go do a PGY2. So if you felt like um, you're being forward thinking, you're like, hey, maybe I want to do this or like transition to care. Yeah. Maybe I can get yeah. an AM care focus. Um, so, so that will help you just get into the field a lot quicker. Because certain fields, it's hard. It's really hard to get in without that some experience, right? right. That's the main thing is if right. you can get the experience elsewhere, you may not need a residency. You can probably get a job at a smaller hospital and, and work in the ED and then eventually get board certified or, or work in certain departments get certified. But how many AMCARE clinics are willing to hire somebody who has no AMCARE experience? The likelihoods are slim to none. You're probably in the middle of nowhere. So it's like that, if that's what you try to do with AMCARE, you might have to do at least a PGY1 AMCARE for the kids. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And then for a PGY2, or, and then not worth it if you're burnt out, I definitely don't believe it's worth it for you because you want to put your best foot forward and that's going to be very tough oh, if, yeah. if you're yeah. emotionally strained if you're mentally strained and and just like you need a break if you're thinking you need a break i don't know how i'm going to do a residency maybe take a break just work a little bit and then apply again next year if you truly feel like it's meant for you and then if you're comfortable if you're comfortable working more of a typical central position if you're comfortable working retail or in certain professions where it's not really needed i believe it's not worth it for you mm -hmm. because then you're just doing it as a pre just to put mm -hmm. on on a, on a piece of paper when you could have spent that time actively working, making money, maybe enjoying life with your family, doing different things like that. I agree, yeah. And then for, do you have anything else you want to add for PGY1? Or? No, nothing that. I mean, really, again, just, I mean, I agree with everything what you've stated. And yeah, burnout is, burnout is real. Burnout yeah. is real with everything that's gone on the last couple of years with the pandemic. 
Um, and like I've been trying to find studies that quantify like you know what's the rate of burnout amongst residents, and um, I haven't really found anything yet. But at least they have something for just pharmacists in general. Like the rate of burnout is between like forty six to sixty two percent. And that's just regular pharmacists not doing a residency, right? Yeah. So you can only imagine what that's a resident is going through. So I guess yeah, probably seventy percent, probably. Um, and then for PGY two, real quick. Yeah. If you know you want to specialize in something, mm -hmm. um, it's a quicker route to get there than probably having to work your way. There's nothing wrong with going the quick, quicker route. If that's what you want. It's, it all depends on you, right? Like yeah. what you want. So. If there is something specific that you want to get in that you don't believe you'll get into um, immediately, you didn't want to spend years working into that position, you just yeah. wanted to go and get it, yeah. uh, I believe it'll be for you. People who I believe it's not for, once again, if you're burnt out. And then two, if you can go another route and get special and get a certification, excuse me. And that's something, for example, like I'm really into pharmacogenomics. And I was like, I could apply for the PGY2 in pharmacogenomics or... I could just work and then do a certification in pharmacogenomics. Yeah. So I'll just do that, you know? A lot of times we forget that we can do certifications and, and um, uh, do a lot of different alternative things. You can take some courses online to help you become educated in certain fields. And so that way you can either get board certified in something or just get a, a certificate, like a teaching certificate if you want to teach and, and different things like that. So that's who, who I would say PGY2 is probably not worth it. Of course, I never did it. Yeah. but if you can get a certification another way or if you're burnt out after your first year it's probably not going to be uh, the best idea to go right into that pgy2 yeah there are just so many roles that you can take to get to to the same goal or the goal that you want so like don't feel that residency is the only route that will open you up to opportunities and at the end of the day it's all just it all depends on how much work you're willing to you know put into it how much research you're willing to do um, how much forward think that you need, that you will do, right? It's all it's it's all planning, right? And it's it might be hard for a student um, to think five years down the line, ten years down the line, because the the future is so uncertain. But as long as you have a clear vision, like a mission that you have, it'll make planning a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, for me, doing a PGY two have benefited me. But I had a clear vision of what I want to do. Yeah. Um, like I had goals that I had set in mind. Like I want to get, you know, BCACP certified. Um, you know, I I envisioned myself working in like an AM care setting, working in like a primary care clinic. And right now, like I'm doing that. So um, it's not like you know, it's not like I walked into this position just like it just magically fell in my lap. No, I put in the work. Like I put myself in that position so I could, you know be where I am right now. So, um, and yes, residency, PGY2 helped, but at the end of the day, it's just all about planning, research. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. No, thank you, Alex, um, for sharing your story with us today. Shout out to Christian. Mm -hmm. um, glad we're able to discuss this with everybody. And if you enjoyed this episode and you would like more episodes like this, like, you know, is, is pharmacy a good career to get into? Uh, different things like that, you know, a lot of those headliner questions, I guess I could say. If you're, you know, enjoying this, please let us know. Um, leave a comment. What, what should we have our, our followers do? On Instagram, um, I want you to all follow us. And then what should we have them uh, comment? Um, that's should a good we do like a thumbs up? Thumbs up or, you know, like if you have any suggestions, anything that you would like us to talk about, just throw it in the uh, in the comment section because we're always looking for new ideas, yeah. things to talk about. Um, you know, let us know if you, you, you enjoy the content, right? If you yeah. like kind of the format. I know we're trying, we're, we're, we're trying a lot of different things right now. Yes. Um, you know, and that's just part of our growth. We're evolving, so. Yeah, definitely. So um, at CapsRx Podcast, find us on Instagram and put a thumbs up in the comments when uh, the post gets released yeah, and uh, that'll let us know you enjoyed this episode we kind of see the numbers and see how we'll take things from there so yeah. thank you all for listening uh, we appreciate it and if you want to dive a little bit deeper um, with a one-on-one -on -one session with Alex or I please uh, feel free to message us as well we can kind of walk you through or maybe help you um, analyze whether or not residency is worth it for you 
I've talked to people out of it. I've talked to people into it. So, uh, kind of a that's how you know I'm not biased. I'm not biased. I'm not working for anybody. I'm not getting paid or sponsored for my thoughts. But uh, yeah. you know, I, I want people to do what's best for them because you matter. You're important to your friends and your family. And so, I want to make sure that any way I could help you gain some clarity in what you want to do with a big life decision, yeah. um, please feel free to reach out. Thank you, guys.